In the dawn of creation, the soul of man is kindred of the gods. Seeking splendor as eternal as the sun and the sky. Shaping with the rare vision of the inner eye life's fleeting presence. Shaped and hallowed in bronze, triumphantly supreme for all eternity. very much and for that reason I have my studio outside of the city that way I really enjoy every minute not only the working but the nature surrounding me on the outskirts of Winnipeg Manitoba stands an abandoned one-room prairie schoolhouse here one of Canada's leading sculptors creates the things of his vision to leave them to time and memorial. Come, Shirley. Leo Mole is a sculptor in the classical tradition. His portraits in bronze are cast in the lost wax process, a method known since the 6th century BC. From my childhood, as far back as I can remember, I always work with clay because I was growing up in a Porter's family. And of course, it was a natural thing in a family to do what your father was doing. Children always love to make all kinds of things from clay. I started modeling animals. And then when I was four or five years old, I started working on a pottery wheel. So, you see, from the very early days, I was introduced in a wonderful manner to the art of form. Leo Mole was born in Ukraine in 1915. He studied in Vienna, in Berlin, and in The Hague. In 1948, he made his home in Canada. Over the years, the works of Leo Mole have brought him international recognition. With the creations have come prestigious awards. Where art is concerned, I do strongly believe that the artist has a certain place in a community. He can actually serve the community in a spiritual way. How? It is up to the artist, really. There is no formula. That is the whole essence of the creative work. As soon as you try to put in certain rules, you immediately kill the creative forces. The artist should be responsible for finding out how he can best serve his community. Because, you see, the artist isn't just someone standing apart or growing in the community like a weed by the highway. If he decides to just work for himself and he really doesn't care what the community reaction will be, then he shouldn't attempt to display his work. There must be honesty on the part of the artist. Personally, I most enjoy working on the sculptural portraits. I feel it is one of the most difficult topics in sculpture. It requires that the sculptor not only has the necessary formal training, but a certain feeling and intuition for character. 
in a way, it is something like a cartoonist working, except that the cartoonist always exaggerates the character. When you do a sculpture or portrait, you have to bring out the individual character so strongly that when you see the head later, it is almost if you are meeting the living person. Leo Mole is known for his highly sensitive and personal interpretations. His present task is a new commission, a head in bronze of Mykola Lysenko, the Ukrainian composer and founder of the Conservatory of Kiev. Lysenko is remembered for his compositions and arrangements deeply rooted in Ukrainian folk music. a commission on, let's say, a sculpture of a person who died perhaps 100 years ago. It is really a question of your own personal interpretation. Um, you may be able to see some paintings or some photographs, but in the end, you have to create in your own mind the way the person might have looked. When I was doing this work, I listened to some of Mr. Lysenko's music. And of course, I did a lot of reading about his work. But in this respect, it is really up to the sculptor as to how he will interpret the subject. Some sculptors take a measurement of the person's head. But the way I feel about it, you can measure anything except the character of a person. The model in plasticine is the first step in making a sculpture in bronze. It is also the only creative aspect of the artist's work. What follows is purely technical work. Although requiring much skill, it can be performed by craftsmen. But Leo Mole prefers to do the work himself. Liquid synthetic rubber will solidify into a mold. The mold is prepared in two parts, front and back so that it can be pulled off the plasticine head later. Gauze strengthens the rubber mold. I feel that for a sculptor, it is absolutely necessary to understand the craftsmanship. That way, when the creative work is finished and artisans take over, the artist can demand and expect the best possible work from his craftsman. The mold is covered with plaster of Paris and reinforced with wire. When the plaster sets, it will support the mold, preserving the shape of the pliable rubber. In the past, Oh, around the time of Renaissance, the youngster was taken as an apprentice to the workshop of sculptor or painter. And that was where he learned all the basic elements. If he did not have enough talent to be a creative artist, he became a very good craftsman. But whatever he did, his individuality revealed itself. Therefore, we shouldn't concern ourselves with trying to be different. Like our own handwriting, our individuality will somehow express itself. The plaster cast is made in several sections and notched to keep them aligned.
in my younger days, all my teachers were practicing sculptors. I was fortunate in being able to observe and absorb what has really involved. The plaster cast is disassembled. The rubber mold peels off like a glove and shows a reversed impression of the plasticine head. From this point on, the original model is no longer needed. The plaster cast is reassembled and will provide a firm support for the flexible rubber mold. Hot melted wax fills every crevice of the rubber mask, which is the reverse or negative impression of the original head. When the wax cools, it will become the positive or exact duplicate of the original plasticine model. In doing the work of the craftsman, Leo Mole controls every detail of the work at hand. He builds up wax to the thickness he intends the bronze to become, for the thickness of the wax will be the thickness of the bronze. In education today, I feel that the artist is not really being fully prepared for his future work. Too often, an attempt is made to teach the students how to create and there is really no recipe how to create. Instead, it is possible to teach only the craft. The wax model is held against the rubber mold, which in turn is supported by the plaster. To hold the wax in place from the inside, the hollow must be filled with a substance that can withstand tremendous heat. That substance is a mixture of plaster of Paris and crushed red clay brick and will form the core. Often, because the student is totally unprepared in school for real world to cope with the many problems a practicing artist encounters, is only too eager to accept a teaching position somewhere. Instead of being a freelancer, creative artist, and in doing so, he almost signs his death sentence. When the teacher is just an immediate graduate from school, he becomes so scholastic, so detached from life, that teaching becomes almost a new profession which has nothing to do with the actual creative forces. I think when the student graduates, he should try to do his own work. Let him support himself in whatever way he can. He really needs to experience something of life first, or else his work will be too mechanical. Of course, it will be a struggle, but I believe in struggling. I think it is important to an artist. When he stops struggling, when the whole thing becomes just routine and comfortable, he gradually loses his enthusiasm for his work. No, graduating from university is not the end. It is only the beginning. The head in wax, supported on the inside by the core, is an exact replica of the head in plasticine. When more of the same core mixture is applied to the outside of the head, enveloping the wax, 
and the work is fired, the wax will melt away. It will be lost, as the name of the lost wax process indicates, and its place will be taken by liquid bronze. A complex system of wax rods are attached to the model. These, when melted, will become canals for the flow of molten bronze and vents for the air that will be forced out. Nails will keep the inner core from shifting when the wax is melted away. Time becomes meaningless when one is absorbed in work. Day passes into night and night into day until at long last the work is ready for the foundry. head is completely encased. Only the top of the funnel is exposed. It will become the opening for the molten bronze. The mold is ready for firing and joins other works awaiting their turn. A temporary oven or kiln is built around them using bricks and wet sand for mortar. The kiln heats for three days, then cools for two days more. The wax is gone. The forms are thoroughly dry and ready for casting. The bronze is ready for pouring at 1200 degrees centigrade. In my foundry, I built all the equipment myself because buying modern temperature control furnaces would be very expensive. And so I came to a very simple, almost ancient method of melting bronze. As a result, it is both inexpensive and practical. It might take a little longer to melt a couple of hundred pounds of bronze but I'm not in a particular hurry, and I want my work to be perfect. In a few hours, the bronze is set and the mold is broken away, but the job is not yet over. The plaster must be removed inside and out. The canals, now converted into solid metal, must be cut away. The nails must be removed and the holes plugged. The surface must be treated with acid. And in the end, the head of bronze, an exact replica that has retained all the subtleties of the original work of art. Art is, I think, really a reflection of the times. Art is affected by everything what is going on in the community or in the country. But there should also be a continuity with the past. I'm trying to find that 
which is common to all good art in the past. Driven by a magnificent force that compels him to create, a force intangible but ever-present, as passionate and daring as life itself, the artist gives visible expression to the world he perceives, and in his creation he proffers his claim to immortality.